Hey guys, welcome to Bookish Islander. My name is Juan. I hope you're all doing well. I'm here today to review The Sense of an Ending by Julian Barnes, which is a novel, a novella rather, that won the Booker Prize in 2011. I'm reviewing this book as part of my ongoing project, The Booker Prize Through the Decades. I began this project by reviewing the 2010 winner of the Booker Prize, The Finkler Question by Howard Jacobson. If you want to find out more about the project and if you want to join and read along with me, I suggest you check out my Friday Reads where I talk about it. I published that Friday Read announcement a couple of weeks ago, but you know, if you want to keep up with the project, then you should keep up with my blah blah. I'm talking like a robot. Anyway, keep up with my Friday Reads from now on. Okay, so on to The Sense of an Ending by Julian Barnes. Julian Barnes is a very well-known English writer. He has a reputation, he's widely published and translated around the world, but he just doesn't seem to be as fashionable as other English writers are. In fact, I don't think I have ever heard anybody talk about Julian Barnes or any of his books on booktube and I prob I'm probably wrong so if you know uh, if you have any videos out there that you've seen or that you've made yourself where people talk about or you talk about Julian Barnes let me know in the comment section down below because I'd be curious to find out what other people think about him anyway he's not that fashionable now and I wonder if he ever was I wonder if he was fashionable at some point in the 1980s or in the 1990s I, I, somehow I don't think he was and I must say that you know I've read several of his books I've read him for years now and I'm not a fan there's always something cold about his writing something that doesn't let me become too engaged with um, his literary production having said that I did enjoy reading the sense of an ending I thought this was a good book I think it helped that it was short but I don't think that was all there is to this book. I think there's more to say for it than the fact that it is short. So let me just tell you about this um, book. This novel, um, the protagonist of this uh, novel here, The Sense of an Ending, it's a 60-year-old English guy who's divorced. His name is Tony Webster. In the first part of the novel, the novel is divided into two separate parts. The first part of the novel takes place in the past and so it deals with Tony's coming of age and his uh, first real loving or romantic relationship with a girl, with a then girl called Veronica in college. You know, she meets her at university and we're regaled with all kinds of details about their relationship. Of course, always from Tony's point of view. And remember that because that is important. Then in the second part of the novel, we're, we move to the present, to the narrative present. And in that part of the novel, Tony has to confront his past and his memories of it. And the catalyst for that confrontation is when he receives 500 pounds from Veronica's mother. So he wonders, just as you're probably wondering right now, why in the name of God would the mother of his college girlfriend bequeath him money, even 500 pounds, which isn't that much, but it, it is something. Why would that happen? So he goes on a quest to try to find out. And of course, what he does is what I think I would do or many people would do, which is he gets back in touch with Veronica. And it is in this second part of the sense of an ending where he realizes that his memories connect him with a whole lot of other people. And as you have probably worked out by now, even if you haven't read the book, Tony is an unreliable narrator. He's not someone that you can trust with his memories. I don't think a person could trust her own memories, let alone somebody else's. So in this case, you definitely shouldn't trust what he's telling you. This novel is a bit of a puzzle, a puzzle where you'd be trying to put all the pieces together and I think that makes for a good book because it keeps you at least well I wouldn't go as far as to say a good book but a book that keeps your interest you know a, a reading this book I was interested I wanted to know where the writer was t taking me and I also felt like I was paying attention and I was working alongside the writer to try to find what the ending would be 
But beware here, because I thought I saw the ending coming from a mile. I thought the ending would be so cliched and predictable, and I was wrong, which is good news in this case. And if this book is a puzzle, and I believe it is, the most mysterious and enigmatic character of them all is Tony Webster himself. So, would I recommend the sense of an ending? I would recommend it to two separate groups of people. Okay, the first group of people are those people who have read Julian Barnes, but haven't read this one, and they already like Julian Barnes's writer writing, then definitely check this out. The second group of people that I would recommend this book to would be people who have never read anything by Julian Barnes, or very little, or so long ago that they don't remember anything about his style, and they want to see what he's capable of. Then I would recommend this book. Just read this book, don't read anything else, read this book first. Because if this book, if this novel does not work for you, if you don't enjoy it, if you don't think it's good, then I don't think Julian Barnes is for you at all. Okay, so that was The Sense of an Ending by Julian Barnes. The next book that I'll review as part of this project is Bringing Up the Bodies by English writer Hilary Mantel. Bringing Up the Bodies is the second in a series, is the second in a trilogy known as the Thomas Cromwell Trilogy. The third book hasn't come up yet, it comes up in 2010, I believe, in the month of March, but the first book is Wolf Hall. If you want to read Bring Up the Bodies, or if you want to watch my review, which I will film and post as soon as I've read the book, I'm reading Bringing Up the, the Bodies right now, uh, so I don't know when that will be because it's a long book, but it will be next week or in the next couple of weeks at most if everything goes right. Anyway, if you want to read if you want to read Bringing Up the Bodies, then you should definitely read Wolf Hall first, which is what I did. And again, if you want to keep up with my Booker Through the Decades project, be sure to check out my Friday reads every week. Okay, let me know if you've read The Sense of an Ending, or if you want to read it, what you think about it, if you've read anything else by Julian Barnes, what you think of his writing. Also, if you're planning on reading Bringing Up the Bodies, I'd be curious to hear that. So, all of that, and anything else that you want to talk to me about, that's what the comment section down below is for. I hope you've enjoyed this review. Thanks for watching, I hope to see you again very soon. Bye-bye.